Hey everybody, welcome back to iPreview. Tonight, here at 6 p.m., we'll be having worship and prayer night. Tonight's going to be such a great night, and we'd love for you to join us. Next Sunday at 6 p.m., we'll be having Infinite's Outdoor Movie Night. Make sure to bring your lawn chairs for a night of fun and fellowship. September 16th through the 19th is the Men's Intent Camping Weekend. If you haven't registered, please see Terry Bird for further information. Attention all ladies, save your dates October 7th through the 9th for Flourish. Carol will be posting all the information in the very near future. Make sure to check in on Facebook. One dollar per check-in goes to Gehanna residents in need. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Make sure to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for any further information here at Infinite.
are in camp round about us we thank you Lord that you watch over us God you've been good to us Jesus thank you Lord falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Oh, yes, falling in love with Jesus. Hey, yeah. Falling in love with Jesus.
My God, my God. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, worship team, for leading us into the presence of God. In his arms, I feel so protected. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, no place I'd rather be. Falling in love with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, I've ever done. It was the best thing I've ever done. Hallelujah. You may be seated. It was 1984. I packed up my little white Nissan 200SX. It had gold cloth material. It was a cool car. It was my first car. And like many college students are doing at this stage and season of the year, I was on my way to go to Kent Christian College out in Dover, Delaware. I'd never lived away from home, never been really away from home for any length of time. And so I drove all the way out to Dover, Delaware and got to the school and began school and I was going for music. And so I um, go into the practice rooms every day at the college there and and there was this uh, young girl that actually sat at the desk. She sort of was in charge of the music rehearsal room area. And uh, she was very attractive. And she had dark brown hair and chocolate brown eyes and, and very striking. And, but I was there for music, so I made sure that I paid attention and went right straight to the rehearsal room. And I would spend time practicing and, and learning how to play the keyboard and and so I uh, would do this every day and for hours upon hours a day. And, and it got to the point, you know, where I'd walk in and we'd have just a little bit of conversation. I would have talked to this girl and, and um, she, she had really crisp S's. I mean, when she would say her S, it was like really girly to me. I mean, I was like, <clears throat> man, I love that. You know, and, and so uh, she had such a sweet little spirit about her. But again, I was there for music. So I went into the rehearsal practice room and I would practice my piano. And after weeks of doing this, I would notice that she would kind of knock on the door and, and sort of, you know, act like she needed to say something. And it was really nothing that was like massively important. It's almost as if she just wanted to like talk or like just let me know that, you know, hey, would you like to talk a little bit, you know? And I was, you know, uh, of course, uh, again, she was very attractive. So that was easy to have that discussion. And then it got to the place where uh, I would act like I didn't realize that I got there early and I would go a little early, you know, to the practice rooms, hoping that she wasn't busy and so that I could have a discussion and have a little conversation with this very attractive, dark brown haired, chocolate brown eyed girl that had really cool S's. And uh, so eventually this got to the beat of the place where we would talk and, and, and talk more. And the more we talked, the more I was beginning to just fall in love with her. And, uh, and so we, would, we got by carrying conversations and then we talked more and, and then we hung out more. And the more we hung out and the more we talked, the more I liked her. And the more I liked her, the more we hung out. And the more we talked, and, and it just, you know, I was becoming, I realized that I'm quite smitten with this girl. And 
So finally it got to the end of this first year of college and, and I'm thinking, I, I think I could really spend the rest of my life with this girl. And, and so I thought, I'm, she was from Illinois and I was from Ohio. And so I thought, I'm going to go to Illinois for the summer and try to meet her family and see what makes her tick. You know, what, you know, what makes Carol, Carol. And, and, and so I, w- I went for the summer and I would get to meet her parents and, and her brothers and, and she had a large family and uh, and so I I spent the summer just trying to learn them because it was important to me I wanted to know where she went to church I wanted to know how she lived for God I wanted to know her parents and what their values were this mattered to me because I figured if I'm going to live with her the rest of her life I want to know what makes her tick I want to know how she became Carol and what kind of parents and 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 what kind of family she had so we wound up getting married and, and as of this last March, we've actually spent 35 years of marriage together, yeah. And um, nothing has separated us, and uh, we've never, you know, we've never been separated, uh, you know, as far as like, let's, let's split up because of some fight or anything. Um, but sickness, we've been through different kinds of sickness, and that didn't do it. And we've had valleys, and, and we've had mountains, and that has never separated us. And we've had money, and we've not had money. And uh, we've lived both those. I will say it's definitely life is more fun with money. You know, but, I mean, it still, it didn't separate us. And, and uh, we, we've always enjoyed each other. And, in fact, we're to the place now that we can literally sit in the same living room and text. Is that weird or what? You know, it's like, I'll see her sitting over there reading a book or something, and I'll just text her just to interrupt her and just say, my God, you're gorgeous. You know, and, and still after 35 years, she mesmerizes me. And, and, and so, you know, it's, it's been one of these things in life that, you know, it's just, it was the right decision. And, you know, and I've, and, and I've fallen in love with her. And, and it came from starting with little tiny conversations and, and spending time together where it became this obsession. And so, I don't know, like, you know, they called me last night, Michael and Carol. They went up to those outlets north of Columbus, and, and they said, hey, do you want to meet us at Cracker Barrel? Well, I was, you know, studying and working on my message, and so if it's not that good today, you'll know why, you know, because they called and asked, and, and they said, would you want to meet us for dinner? And and so uh, I thought, well, yeah, I, I would love to meet you all for dinner because I really like you, and, and I like to spend time with you. And, and so I drive all the way up there to go to Cracker Barrel, and we have a wonderful meal together, and then and then she um, we're we're leaving the restaurant, and so I'm thinking Carol's going to ride with me home because we're all going to the same place, and so I'm thinking Carol's going to walk to my car, and and I'll get to spend time with her on the drive all the way back to the house. This still matters to me, and but she didn't. In fact, she acted like we never do that, you know, and she started walking to Carol's car or my Kel's car, and they get in a car, and they drive off, and I have to drive all the way back to home by myself. And I'm thinking, now I've got a license that says we're married, and that you're supposed to be in my car. You know, and, but I didn't say anything. I just let him drive. And the whole time I'm thinking, I wanted you in my car. You know, I wanted you to, just, I mean, we probably wouldn't have talked or anything. We'd probably just, just listen to music or something all the way home. But just the fact that she would have been in the car would have made me feel a lot better. Instead, they both are obviously behind me, and they call me, criticize my driving on the way home. And they said, what are you doing, Facebooking down 270 or what? You know, you're all over the road. You know, and, and so even to this day, I look for time to be with her. I look for time to just go hang out and, and just talk. And even if it's about nothing, you know, I mean, isn't it amazing when you date, you can spend hours talking about nothing? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. You know, it's like, what'd you talk about? I, I don't know. We just, just want to talk to her, you know, and want to spend time with her. And, and so you, you find yourself becoming obsessed. And, and so there's another love that I want to talk to you about, though, that's even more powerful than the love 
between a husband and a wife or a mom and a child. And that's the love of Jesus Christ. And my, my love affair with him is even more important to me than my love affair with my wife. And, and Paul, the apostle Paul, he talks about this kind of same love where you're obsessed and, and where nothing will separate us and, and nothing will divide us. And, and Jesus loves me and I love Jesus and we've been through a lot and, and, and there's just nothing that's going to separate us. So he, he, he's talking to the believers or the Christian church at Rome. And, and, he, and he's, he, he's talking to them. And if you could just imagine Apostle Paul being here this morning, talking to Infinite Church, to all of you. And, and this is what he wants to say in Romans chapter 8, verse 38. He's sharing with the, the Roman church. And he says, for I am persuaded, or I am convinced, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things that are going on right now, or things that may go on tomorrow. He said, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. He's telling him, he said, I have no plan B. I don't have a plan B. Jesus is my everything. I've been through hell and back. I've been persecuted. I've been rejected. I've gone through things in this world that just weren't fair. But when it's all said and done, my passion and my love lies with my Jesus Christ. And nothing is going to separate it. He's saying, I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, living or dead, angelic or demonic, or today or what may happen in my tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus has embraced us. I'm telling you, we've got to fall in love with Jesus. I was 10 years old. My father had taken his first church as a pastor in Rochester, Minnesota, the home of the Mayo Clinic. And um, I was little, I was 10, and, and um, this church was old. And it was like just your typical little little white church. And uh, it wasn't very big, and the congregation was probably about 60 people. And, um, and, and it had a basement in the bottom of this church that had gray painted floors and this is where we had like Sunday school this is where we had uh church and uh, for the kids and 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 sometimes it's like condensation would get on these gray painted floors and and you would like slip you know and and then they had these little tiny mealy bugs I don't know if you know what they are but they're disgusting you know and and especially as a kid you know, you're sitting down there listening to the Word of God, and all of a sudden you see this little tiny bug crawling over. You just want to, like, flick it across the, you know, the, the, you know, the concrete floor. And, but I remember my dad would tell me we would have church on Sunday morning and Sunday night. And my dad would tell me, Mark, you know, will you go down? Because the bathrooms were downstairs. You go figure. You know, and, and so my dad would tell me, he said, Mark, will you go shut the lights off downstairs? Now, I don't know how much you've grown up around church, but churches are scary in the dark. I mean, if you ever have like prayer meetings and you're the only one in the church, I mean, you're sitting there praying and you're having just a really sweet moment with God. And it's like, oh my God, someone's here. You know, someone's in the room. And you're like, I don't know this place. I think they're on the other side of the building. You know, and you're like, who's in here? And now you all of a sudden you like want to pray really quiet because you don't want them hearing your prayers and all that, you know. And so this is where my dad, this is where I always tell people I was really fast when I was a teenager. I know you look at my physique now and you can't see that. But I was skinny and fast when I was a teenager. And I really attribute most of my quickness was from these moments where my dad would tell me to shut the lights off and then we'll go. Because I would go and flip the switch and be back up the stairs before it was dark. I mean, that's how fast I was. I mean, like, I am not getting caught down here with all the devils from everybody that's ever attended this church, you know. 
And so, I mean, some of you, you grew up around church, you, you, you get it, you know. So, I mean, I would flip that switch and fly up those stairs and then just act like, yeah, yeah, let's go. You know, like nothing, you know, I didn't want my dad to think I was scared or anything, you know. So, uh, then we would go and, and, but I remember one particular Sunday night, my dad preached a message and we had a center, we had a center aisle and two sets of seats. It was a small church. And I sat on this side in not the end seat, but the second seat on the front row. And my dad preached a message. I, I, I feel bad. I don't remember what the message was about, but whatever he preached got a hold of me. And I remember at the end of his message, man, God began to move in my little heart. And, and that night, God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I began to speak in a heavenly language that I'd never learned or never knew. And then after that moment, I mean, it was a wonderful moment that I'll never forget. After that moment, just like the book of Acts, I immediately went up to, we had a little baptismal tank that was behind the, the pulpit and it had the little square in the wall. And, uh, and, and it was a metal tank that was ugly. And, and the water was liquid ice. I mean, it was like freezing. And I mean, um, and so I got in this little tank, my little skinny body is uh, just like being eaten up by this frozen water. And, and, but yet there was something about that. I felt the embrace. I felt the warmth of Jesus as I, as I went down in the name of Jesus into that water. And I realized, God, you are good to me. I was young. I didn't probably understand all the deals that life was going to throw my way. But at 10 years old, I remember. Jesus baptizing me with his spirit and the presence of God began something in me that day. I mean, there was, there was something, there was a love affair that started in my life with Jesus Christ at 10 years old. Now, I love to tell you that I was a perfect teenager and, and you know, I just quoted scripture every day throughout my teen years and, and you know, just prayed and did everything right. I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I had my moments. And I can tell you throughout my life, I've had some storms. And I can tell you throughout my life that I've had moments where I thought, am I going to make it? And nine years ago in September, I had multiple heart attacks. And throughout life, I've had people take advantage of me. And I've had people in the church that's hurt me, hurt me. And I've had even ministers uh, that have just done things that I thought were really unrighteous to me. And, and, and I've had family members that have rejected me or put me off to the side. And, and I've, had, I've had some hurts. I've had some pains. I've had some moments that things just didn't seem like, where is God in all this? Yet I can tell you, it was the best thing. That at that 10 year old moment, it's been the best thing through my entire life that I've ever done was falling in love with Jesus. He's never failed me. He's never let me down. And here I am now, I'm 56 years old, and no one has ever cared for me like Jesus. No one has ever been so faithful to me as my Jesus. He's always been on time with me. He's always done me right. He's never let me down. He's never failed me. There's been a few times I thought he was a little slow. There's been a few times I thought, my God, you know, do I need to say it louder or longer? Because it's not getting here as fast as I like. And, and most of you know, I'm not the most patient person in the world. But falling in love with Jesus was the best thing that I've ever done. He's never failed me. Accepting Jesus that night in Rochester, Minnesota has changed my life. And it was the best decision I've ever made. And then that night going down in that freezing cold water in the name of Jesus changed me. Something started in me. 
something began to birth in me and, and, and I've always known that Jesus was with me I've always had confidence uh, even though everything else uh, was upside down I've always had this confidence that Jesus is walking with me and we're going to make it people have let me down friends have let me down family has let me down I've even let myself down. But Jesus has never walked away from me. And he's always been there. Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Politics has disappointed me. Social media posts have disappointed me. The news has left me feeling discouraged and not knowing what to trust and what to believe. When I don't know who to trust, I know who that I can go to. And that is my Jesus Christ because he's always been there for me. I refuse fear. I refuse, I refuse hate. I refuse division. And I refuse a cynical spirit. I'm just not going to let that happen in my life. I refuse to be judgmental. I refuse to focus on carnal subjects. I am going to keep my focus on Jesus because I know when I focus is when I am most in love with him. Now, in Carol and I's relationship, I have realized that the times when our marriage would struggle is the time when we got busy and stopped talking and stopped spending time together and start, stopped giving each other attention. And, and, and we get busy with life. We get busy with kids. We get busy with careers. We get busy with trying to achieve and, and, and pay the bills and, and, and get promotions and run businesses and, and, and get this kid to this sport and get this kid to this hobby. And we just get busy. It's not something we set out to say, hey, let's see if we can grow apart. We didn't, we never, we've never done that. And I don't think that people just say, hey, I think I'm going to walk away from God because, you know, I'm a little too busy right now. I, I don't think that's really the heart of most people. What I do believe is we just get busy and we stop talking and we stop giving attention and we stop, and we stop just focusing on each other. And before you know it, we wake up thinking, who are you? You know, I mean, uh, many, many marriages go through this where they get busy with life and, and they think because they're showing up under the same home that all is all is well. And, and you know, because they're working, they're working on their careers, they're trying to get promotions. After all, we want to create a safer and a more secure and a more financially sound home. And, and so what I'm doing is right. What I'm doing is, you know, good for my spouse and my kids. And, and, and before you know it, you when you're getting home, they're going away because now they're going to work and, and they're starting to you know do what they do to help the family and you're crisscrossing and you're not talking and you're not communicating and, and you're not giving each other attention and then the kids are grown and this has gone on for a long time and you're like uh, who are you? I forgot who you are and you realize if you're not intentional with that relationship, if you don't set aside time if you don't get it on your schedule, then the enemy will make sure that something else comes on your schedule. The enemy will make sure someone else gets in your schedule. The enemy will definitely make sure that a new employee comes into your job that will give you some conversation, that will give you some attention. And before you know it, you're now distracted from your true love. And this happens in our walk with God. We get busy. We'll miss this Sunday. Well, I can't make it that week because, you know, kids got this and, and we've got that and we're just going to go do this and we're just going to go do that. And, and you don't think this one Sunday is going to make a difference. But what happens is it's little by little subtle moves and of distraction. And before you know it, you're like, I don't feel you anymore, God. It's been a long time since I've really felt the presence of God like I used to feel him. 
Because I remember times that I would be around this altar. Tears would be running down my face. And I would care less what anything else was going on. I just wanted the presence of God to surround me. I just felt, I just felt, I'm like, you could just keep singing that song over and over and over. Because I'm having a moment with my God right now. I'm having a moment in his presence. I remember times at church camps or, or times with my friends. Times when God moved on me and it was just special. And those were many memories. Those were altars that I built. Those were time capsules that God did something special. I remember when I first had that move with God that he filled me with his spirit. And, and you think back to those moments, it's been a long time. I remember standing next to my parents and watching God do the miraculous around them. I remember times with grandma or grandpa and God would do this in our services. I remember going to church every night for weeks because we'd have these revivals and, and God would do great things. And it's been a long time since I felt the presence of God like I used to feel. And so the only way I know is how to bring that back. The only time I know, the only way I know is when Carol, through 35 years, you know, we feel like, man, she's gotten busy, I've gotten busy, she's doing her world, I'm doing my world. We realize, hey, we're too busy. We're way too distracted. We've got to focus and, and we'll take some time and we'll just go out and, and just have some fun together. And, and all of a sudden, it's amazing how that relationship just begins to blossom all over again. And it's the same way with God. And you just say, I'm going to go to church this morning. I'm going to feel the presence of God. And when you're in the presence, when you're in the atmosphere, you're thinking, ha, I've got to be here every week. This is too good. This feels too right. I've got to be in his presence. I can't make it without him. You see, if I would not come home tonight and not communicate with Carol, and I just would be on my own, just not come home. Now, we have on our phones, we know where everybody is. We know our kids know where we are. We know where our kids are. We have that little thing on your phone. It's like, you know, Carol did that when they were teenagers, and it's just never changed. And, and so, yeah, we were those kind of parents where we like, you know, our kids didn't budge or breathe without us knowing where they were, you know? And so we just still have that. We all, you know, we all just know where each other is. But if I, if we didn't have that and I didn't come home and I just, you know, hey, I, I just, I'm, I'm just out, I'm doing my own thing. Would that be rude? Would that be disrespectful? Would that be careless? Would that be uncaring? You know, uh, if I didn't communicate with Carol and she was sitting at home thinking, where's Mark? What happened to him? Is he in an accident? You know, is he somewhere else? Is his heart somewhere else? Is he with somebody? See, if I keep doing that, then Carol's going to wonder, where's Mark's heart? And it's the same thing with our walk with God. If we don't come home, if we don't come to the house of God, then we start to think, I, I wonder, does God think, where are you? I haven't seen you. You've not communicated with me. I've not heard from you. You're not talking to me, and you're not showing up. You're not giving me attention. You, you just, you seem far away, and I'm just wanting to spend some time with you. I'm desperate to hear your voice. I'm desperate for those moments when you would lift your hands and worship and, and, and you would have tears rolling down. I felt like you really loved me. I felt like you really enjoyed me. You see, it takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of work. And the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And when you invest in it, when you put time into it, you see, marriages can be horrible. In fact, I always tell everybody, you want to live a long life, marry the wrong person. Because every day will seem like eternity. But if you marry, and if you're a Christian, you know, you're like, well, I can't get divorced. You know, I can't kill her. Don't know where I put the body. You know, I mean, so, so the answer is, let's make this an amazing relationship. And so I'm going to invest in it. I'm going to find time. I'm going to say, hey, let's go get some wits. We both like that. Tell, you know, hey, let's go do something fun. Let's talk. Let's spend time. Let's just text. Let's just say I love you. You know, see, Carol and I both, I don't want to sound so tough. I want to know that Carol loves me. You know, I love it. Carol gives two kinds of kisses. 
I'm making her a nervous wreck right now. <laughs> Carol gives two kinds of kisses. The, the obligatory kiss, you know, like, you're gone, see ya, have a good day. But then there's sometimes, there's just sometimes, she gives this kiss like, I really love you. And I'm like, my goodness. I love my life. And I think sometimes we walk into this building thinking, give my obligatory praise. Just lift my hands. I know what to do. Sing my little song. Watch the lyrics. But then there's sometimes when we walk into this room and we say, oh, I feel it today. I feel it today. I'm just going to let you know that I love you. I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's paying attention. It's just a you and me moment. As our kids were teenagers and growing up, I would make a point to gross our kids out. You know, I thought they need to know that I love their mom. And they would like turn their heads and they would like, oh, dad, that's disgusting. Please, please. You know, I want this world to know that I love my Jesus. I want this church to know that we love our Jesus. When people walk through these doors, I would say, hey, one thing I have to tell you, they love their God. They know how to worship. They know how to, they know how to let him know they love him. Come on, church. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I wouldn't trade all my ups and downs. I wouldn't trade all the rejections and hurts and wounds that happen in the church. If you think you're going to come to infinite and not be hurt and not be offended, you will. We're just normal human people like everybody else. We say dumb things. We do dumb things. And, and sometimes we're careless. And sometimes we're thoughtless. And sometimes we do crazy things. But I'm telling you, through all of that, I still tell you, the best thing that ever happened to me was Jesus Christ. Christ, you can't keep me from walking through these doors because I love him too much. When you miss church, you should miss church. I remember Carol and I when we had Michael, we had COVID back in January. We could have come the second Sunday, but because I was the pastor, I didn't want everybody to think that I was inconsiderate. So we stayed home the second Sunday. I was miserable. I'm like, man, I wonder how it's going. I wonder what songs are singing. Wonder how it's, man, they're probably having the best service ever and I'm missing it. I mean, that's just the way I feel. I can count on my hands how many times I've not been in church on a Sunday morning in, in my 56 years. Take away the times I've maybe been on vacation or the times I've been sick. I think I can count on two hands how many times I've not been in church on a Sunday morning. I mean, when I was a kid, my mom said, unless you're throwing up, you're going to church. You know, and as an adult, we said that to our kids. You know, in fact, Carol just said, I would never want God to think that we put something else first. You know, she said, I wouldn't want him to ever take my kid. I mean, we just, we've had a fear and a love and a respect and a compassion and a passion for the things of God. You know why? Because we one day met Jesus and he changed us and we fell in love with him and it just became an obsession to us. You see, everything, Everything in my life has always, before I was a pastor seven years ago, everything has always been about the church and about him. It's always been my passion to be at church and to be in church things. You see, when, when you're in love, I mean, you just find something to do to be together. I mean, you just find crazy, dumb stuff. You know, and when you're in love with God, you're like, hey, let's build a flow. Hey, let's paint walls. Hey, let's stand outside with a sign. You know, hey, let's stand in the door and, and welcome people. Because see, you, you, you don't look for rules. You know, Carol and I, when we got married, we didn't make all these rules. We didn't say, now, now that we're married, let's sit down. You write out your list and I'll write out my list. And you can go here, you can go there. You can say this, you can't say that. You can, you know, hang with this person. You can't hang with this person. Go to the gym, can't go to the gym. No, we didn't make all those rules. You know Why? 
Because we made them ourselves for each other. We just were so so in love with each other. There's people I wouldn't hang around. There's, there's things I wouldn't do. There's, there's places I wouldn't go. Because I don't want Carol to ever question where my heart is. And see, so when you fall in love with God, you know, I shouldn't have to make rules for everybody. And say, you got to do this, got to do that, got to do this, got to do that. No, when you're in love with God, you just say, God, I don't do this because I have to. I do this because I want to. God, I just want to please you. I just, I mean, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. I just want to, I just want to be with you. This morning I got here early and Dan came to me and said, hey, did you feel an extra sweet presence? He said, he said, I was just walking around this morning for property and just praying. The whole time what Dan was saying to me, what I got out of it anyway, was while I'm putting a flag in, I'm saying, God, I love to do this. I love to get this place set up on Sunday mornings so when people come, Lord, they'll feel the presence of God. I'm not just putting a flag in. I'm praying that every flag catches someone's attention. I'm not just getting this place ready, but I know, God, that you are about to be glorified, and I'm just setting it up. Come on, are you getting what I'm throwing down this morning? What I'm telling you is what we do, we get to do, because he's so good to us, and I'm in love with him. I'm in love with him. God is the best thing that's ever happened to me. How do you rekindle a love that maybe has gone a little awry. Maybe it's gone dried up a little bit. Every once in a while, Carol and I will be sitting with a young married couple, and they'll say, hey, you know, I, I just don't love him anymore. I just don't love him anymore. I fell out of love. Well, first of all, let me tell you, for all married couples, love is not a feeling. Love is a commitment. And, you know, and, and one of the things that we've always realized is whatever got you there in love in the first place Go back and do that again. Go back and do that again. It's amazing how many people, some girls will go to the gym with their boyfriends. They don't even like the gym. They just go there because he's there. Then they get married, and the first thing she does, quit going to the gym. And then they wonder, like, oh, we did this all the time. We did, you know, there's some things Carol has done with me for years that she, I know she doesn't enjoy. But she just does it because she likes to hang with me. And it's the same thing with your walk with God. You start again by giving attention. Where attention goes, energy grows. And, and you just say, hey, God, I'm just going to start talking with you again. I'm going to start I'm going to start hanging out with you again. I'm going to spend some time in you version. Today I'm going to go home and I'm going to set up a new plan for me to start tomorrow morning so I can start being in your presence again and reading your word again. I want to hear from you. I want to know what you're saying to me. And I just believe when you start giving attention, when you start listening, when you start saying, hey, I'm going to go to corporate prayer the last Sunday night of the month because I just want you to know God I love you and I can't wait it's not so oh, got corporate prayer the last Sunday night of the month I was going to go golfing I was going to go to the outlets God you'll understand won't you you'll understand possibly but I think and I believe with all my heart, when I start giving God attention, when I start giving time. In fact, this isn't in my notes. I, I said it in the last message. But, you know, I've spent money irresponsibly throughout 35 years of marriage because I love her. I mean, there's been times, I, I know most of you guys aren't like this. It's kind of weird of me, but I actually enjoy it. So Carol and I, We'll, we'll go to the mall or go someplace, and, and, I, um, and I'll just go, man, this is a cool outfit. I like this outfit. And I'll get about 10 outfits, and I'll tell her to just go in the dressing room and try them on and just model them for me. And I'll just sit there in a little chair and, and sit on my phone, wait for her to come out. And, I mean, sometimes she comes out and thinking, oh, yeah, I like that one. That color just looks amazing on you. You know, of course, you know, most women, does this make me look skinny? Does this make me, you know, all those questions. I mean, like, Carol, you're crushing it in that outfit. We're getting that one. No, we're not getting this one, Mark. Did you see the price tag on this? And sometimes I've irresponsibly spent money on outfits that I should have never purchased if I was responsible. 
but it just looked good. And I'm like, baby, you've got to have that outfit. And because you look amazing in that particular outfit. And then she said, okay, you're going to have to choose. It's either this one or that one. And I'm like, no, both. We're doing both. I like both. Some of your wives, I know right now, you're hitting your husband. Say, are you listening to this? We're getting the CD of this message. We are watching this one again. All you women, you can thank me later. But there has been times in our 35 years of marriage that there has been a vision or a need. And and Carol and I, just God works in our hearts and says, I want you to give to this. And, 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 And we've given sometimes where I thought, whoo, that was not responsible. That was out of our budget. That was more than what we could have really afforded. In fact, I remember one particular time several years ago, we gave to something that was crazy. I mean, we'd never given that kind of money before. And, and, but we just felt to do it. We wanted to do it. And we did it. And we've actually griped a few times since. I'm just being honest with you. I'm like, man, we should have never done that. Mark, that was part of our retirement. That I'm not sure that was responsible. But can I tell you, when we moved into this building, I looked at Carol and I said, come on now. Look what God has done for us. We sit in this building debt free. We don't owe anybody a dime. God's been good to us. We wrote that check for cash for this building. And I just happen to believe it's all of you. It's Carol and I. All of us that God says, now's the time. I've been waiting for this moment. You didn't know it 10 years ago. But I've been waiting for this particular moment. In the second most affluent community in Ohio, I'm going to put you right on Main Street and I'm going to pay for it in cash. Come on somebody. I'm falling in love with that kind of God. Keep talking. Keep praying. Get in his word. Stir it back up. Stir back that love within you and say, come on, God, let's go back. There's an old song that says, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. I God, take me back to those moments. Uh, Lord, when we just, you talked to me, you worked with me, you, you just birthed something in my spirit. Can we stand this morning? Is there someone here today? that will say yes to falling in love with Jesus. You know you're not where you should have been. You know you've been a little relaxed. You know you've been a little distracted. That's human. We, we, we have a way of doing that. Life has a way of hitting us upside the head sometimes. But as you've been listening to this message, you know in your heart, you say, God, I've got I've to make you my number one again. Have you ever loved somebody that doesn't love you quite as much? You know, have you ever been in a relationship where you really care for someone, but they don't care quite for you like you care for them? That's a horrible feeling. Sometimes you go through this when you're dating. You're like, Man, you are just smitten with this person. But they're not quite as smitten as with you. And man, you're like, you want to do everything you can to convince them. And I'm worth it. I'm worth it. You need to love me. And I just wonder sometimes, after all that Jesus has done, if he looks at us and says, I think I love them far more than they really love me. They, they seem to have loves over here. They seem to have a love over there. They seem to care more about this hobby than me. Can I give a challenge to this church? Why don't we spend from this day forth and say, God, I'm falling in love with you all over again. 
I'm going to get back in your word. I'm going to start. I'm going to take my moments of driving to work, you know, and, 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 and talking to you and worshiping. You know, see, Carol, we don't put on our schedule. Now, every day so we can have a good marriage, we're going we're gonna to just sit and stare at each other and talk from 8 to 9 every night. That would be kind of forced and weird, wouldn't it? But you know what we do? We look for moments throughout the entire day to talk. I mean, we'll text. We'll we'll just, hey, where you at? What you doing? Nothing, just, you know, hey, I'm on my way to Target to pick up something. And, and, and we'll talk the whole way. Sometimes we take two cars or someplace and because we can't ride together. We're crazy like this. We literally call each other and talk the whole way there like we're in the same car. Because we just love to hear each other talk. And so, what if, what if, as you're getting ready to go to the restroom at work, you're walking down the hall, it's just you, and you say, God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for my job. I just, I don't have long. I got about, you know, 60 seconds here. But I just, I couldn't get, I couldn't walk down this hall without saying I love you. I couldn't walk down this hall saying thank you for my job. When I'm on my way to work, instead of listening to junk, I can say, God, I've got 20 minute ride to work. You and I are going to have a moment. I'm going to put the radio on. We're just going to play. I, I believe in, you know, CC White and said, and I'm going to believe in the, what's up for, what's the song? I believe for it, yeah. And I'm, I, I've listened to that song so many times, and, and I just think, God, this is, the, this is the kind of God I serve. You can break down walls. You can break down barriers. You can take care of things that are bigger than me. You can take care of things that, that I can't have capabilities of doing. Lord, I just want to say I love you today. I'm not asking for anything. I just want you to know thank you for walking with me today. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for my health. Thank you for a sound mind. Thank you for your presence that I feel around me. When I'm on my way home from work, I got a few more minutes. I want to say, God, I love you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for a good day. Thank you, Lord, as I go home to a good wife and children or my home, wherever it is, whatever you're, wherever you are in your phase of life. God, I just want to say, I'm going home, Lord. Thank you for a good home. I know you're going to be in my home when I get there. I know your presence is going to be over our children. And just come on. This is what I'm talking about. Something that you just can't get your mind off of. It, it goes on all day long. When you lay your kids down at night and you walk out of the room, you say, God, I feel your presence over my child. I know you're protecting them. I know you're keeping them. Can I just say, I thank you? Can I just say, oh God, I'm loving you more than ever and you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I want to open up this altar for every person that says, you know what? I want to fall more in love with him. I want a better relationship with him. And just take a minute just take a few minutes before you leave here today and you can do it right where you are god god's everywhere but yeah i just sometimes i think when you take a step out of your comfort zone it just says god i just i you just got to know where my heart is today you got to know what i'm thinking you got to know what i believe in so as we open up this altar and this worship team begins to sing just take a few minutes and let god know how much you love him how good he is to you because he's the best thing that'll ever happen to your life I believe there's some people here that say, I can, I'm going to have a moment like that 10-year-old that says, that, God, you are my king, you are my Lord, and I'm starting fresh with you today. I know I'm not giving you all my attention all the time, but God, I'm going to just tell you, Lord, today I love you. Again, I'm starting fresh and new. I want you to know I want you in my family. I want you to know I want you in my home. I want you to know I want you in my marriage. I want you to know I want you on my job. Lord, walk with me. Let's do this life together. Let's do it together.